and lift it. Oh yeah, look. Just that move removes 10 years from my age. Gravity's a bitch. Hi everyone and welcome back to Linda Libra Luca. Today is another skincare knowledge post, a video, and I'm going to address a question that I get quite a lot. Does every skin need a moisturizer? And to tie in with that, what's the difference between dry and dehydrated skin? And to explain that, I'm going to start with some facts about our skin, some basic science and anatomy. Our skin is built from different layers. There's the upper layer, the epidermis, which is what we are usually seeing. But at the base of the epidermis, there's where new skin cells grow and then they grow up, dry out, and form a protective layer. So there's basically dead skin cells, ceramides, lipids, and water sitting in the upper layer of our skin. This is what we target with most exfoliations like AHAs, and with physical exfoliants where we remove the upper layer of those dead skin cells, the one that don't shed as easily as we age. Then underneath that, there's the dermis. This is much thicker and it's not really the skin cells, the keratinocytes that sit there, but um, some fat cells, some tiny blood vessels and all those glands like the sebum glands and the hair follicle and the connective tissue like collagen and elastin and everything that keeps your skin firm and lifted. Even underneath that, there's the subcutaneous fat. There are larger fat cells, larger blood vessels, again, connective tissue, and this would connect our skin to the muscles and the bones underneath. All these layers are important, uh, but the ones that we tackle the most in skincare is the utmost layer, the epidermis, and yeah, sometimes a little bit of the dermis if you actually use, for example, a BHA, which goes into the pores, and by pores means a sebus gland and works in there. The dermis is where the spots, for example, is of, um, forming, while the epidermis is where melanin and hyperpigmentation and all that jazz happen. Our skin is 70% water, and around 30% of that are in the epidermis. This is what keeps this skin looking plump and glowy instead of dull and rough. I told you that the epidermis uh, forms a protective layer. And for this protective layer, it needs the skin cells, it needs the lipids, it needs the ceramides and all that. That protective layer prevents something called transepidermal water loss, or TEWL, which basically means that the protective barrier is broken and water that needs to sit in the dermis and in the epidermis just evaporates because there is no seal over it, no protection. Now moving on to the difference between skin types and skin conditions. There isn't a strict separation, it's not you have this skin type and that can't be a condition, but it's great for orientation. The skin types are dry, normal, oily or a combination. That can change. It's down to genetics, but it's not uncommon for a skin that was oily in adolescence get normal to dry throughout aging. But these are skin types. This is what your skin is like. And then there's the skin conditions like dehydrated, aging, um, sensitive, dull, anything that describes how the skin looks. What gets confused quite a lot is the difference between dry and dehydrated. But actually, there is a huge difference. Dry skin is usually tight, it is flaky, it is dull, it may feel rough or tack, um, has texture to the touch, while dehydrated feels tight as well but may look oily, it may have larger pores, and the main feature is that makeup that you put on top goes patchy quite quickly as if it sinks into your pores. Now, they may feel the same, they may look different, but the main point is that dry skin lacks oil to form the protective barrier, while dehydrated skin lacks hydration, lacks the, the water in the first place. So one skin needs water, vitamins, and the other skin needs oils. Now, usually dry skin is very often dehydrated as well. 
because yeah dry skin no not enough oils disruptive protective barrier trans epidermal water loss dehydration but you can have dry skin without being dehydrated and you can have dehydrated skin while being oily that happened to me when i went on retinol treatment that my skin got dehydrated while still being combination oily the reasons for dry skin i said it's a skin type so it's mostly genetics but it can be due to medication like Accutane, for example, like birth control can make your skin drier. It um, can be influenced through harsh weather conditions, cold, constant winds that uh, yeah, disrupt your protective layer. And of course, um, through products that remove all the oils and strip your skin, like uh, SLS foaming cleansers or too harsh cleansers, products that contain too much alcohol, things like that. Dehydrated skin is usually not down to genetics, but it is down to lifestyle, like if you have a lot of stress, it's down to diet, if you eat the wrong foods. Smoking medication, like I mentioned, retinol can lead to dehydrated skin as well. And of course, the weather, mostly sun and wind. Now, while I said that the combination is pretty common, so you can have dry and dehydrated skin, it's also possible that you have oily dehydrated skin, which of course needs a completely different treatment than dry dehydrated skin would. Because as I said, the main thing you need to do when you have dry skin is repair your protective barrier by adding the oils that your skin doesn't produce enough that would due to genetics or medication. So you need oil to stop the water you already have in your skin from evaporating. Oil-based creams with a lot of emollients and uh, occlusives. If you have oily dehydrated skin, on the other hand, my skin does produce more than enough oils throughout the day. So if your skin, like mine, is oily and dehydrated, you need to focus on humectants, things that add water to your skin and that is then sealed in with the oils your skin naturally produces. So I, for one, don't really use a moisturizer. I use a lightweight hydrating serum to replenish the hydration my skin needs and rely on my natural oils to seal everything in, and that works well. If I apply a cream that's too rich, it can lead to yeah, breakouts and just overall greasiness and oiliness. So bottom line, it's really important to find out what your skin actually is. If it's dry or if it's dehydrated or if it's a combination of both and then to tackle the different issues separately. Because if your skin is dry and dehydrated, it won't help if you just add hydrating factors because the water will just evaporate unless you have repaired your barrier. Oh, and this uh, disruptive barrier can be due to overexfoliation, for example. So if your skin gets too dehydrated, maybe cut back a little on the exfoliants or on the harsh and stripping cleansers you have. You might make things worse in the first place. Getting back to the question, does every skin need a moisturizer? In my opinion, no. But it leads to a completely different question. The things that are labeled as serum, lotions, oils, day cream and night cream are often labeled like this for marketing reasons. I have a serum in my stash, but it's much richer than a day cream that I have in my stash and contains much, much more emollients and occlusives. So what you need to learn to actually benefit your skin is not decide whether every skin needs a moisturizer, but do I need more humectants or do I need more emollients or occlusives? To clarify this, I'm planning to do a completely different video on humectants and occlusives and emollients. So thumbs up and leave me a comment if you'd like to see that. And for now, I'm going to leave you. Um, yeah, subscribe so you don't miss any further content. I'm going to see you all very soon with another video. Bye. Quite a lot is 